Alrighty, I'm going to be talking about the shoulder girdle today, which is also known as the pectoral girdle. It consists of the clavicle and the scapula. The clavicle, or also known as the collarbone, is a slender, doubly curved bone. The sternoclavicular joint is where the, each shoulder girdle attaches to the axial skeleton. And as these little boxes point out, they're just right there. The acromioclavicular joint is where the acromion connects with the clavic clavicle laterally. Next we have the scapula. The scapula is also known as the shoulder blades and they're just triangular shaped bones. They're commonly called the wings. The scapular spine is a prominent plate of bone on the scapula. It's just right there on both of them. The acromion is the enlarged end of the spine of the scapula. The glenoid fossa is the shallow depression on the scapula which the head of the humerus fits into, which would be right here because this is the humerus. The glenohumeral joint is the joint formed between the humerus and the scapula. medial border is the longest of the three borders. It extends from the superior angle to the inferior angle. The lateral border is the thickest of the three borders. It starts at the lower margin of the glenoid cavity and inclines down and back to the inferior angle. The superior border extends from the glenoid fossa to the superior angle. So it's just like right there. The superior angle is formed by the superior and medial borders. The inferior angle is formed by medial and lateral border. It is the lo lowest part of the scapula. The lateral angle is formed between the superior and lateral borders. The suprascapular notch is the notch in the superior border. It's just medial to the base of the corosoid process. The corosoid process is the process that looks like a beak on the scapula. It's just right there. It looks like a little bird. And that's it for the shoulder girdle.